You guys, welcome. It is Saturday, C2E2 2018. Are you guys having a good time? Are you guys ready to talk about The Walking Dead? So am I. Please welcome to the stage, Corey Payton. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the field, I like this stage. I feel like, I feel, go up. feel like I don't. Oh yeah, I like this stage, man. I gotta say, you look absolutely. You look so right walking down that runway. Absolutely, I, I, I feel like um, I feel like Coco Chanel. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. I'm not gonna lie. I don't you know. you definitely have the swagger. <laughs> you guys think he has the swagger? Can I get a booyah? Booyah! Oh, nice. That's good, man. You guys look like you practiced that. That's amazing. Hey, it's Chicago. They're ready to go, like, they are ready whatever. To go. <laughs> Welcome, by the way. Nice to see you. I love your t-shirt. Yes. Show everybody Save Represent Ferris. in Chicago. M Absolutely Save Ferris. You know, my favorite thing about comic, one of my favorite things about coming to events like this is everyone busts out their best t-shirts for the three days, you, you know? It's it. like, it's like you see the most amazing shirts. So anyway, love it. Thank you. Um, oh, I want to talk to you all about Walking Dead. Oh, God. Well, you can ask me, but I'm not going to tell you anything. I know, but you know what? You, you know how this goes, Claire. I can, I can ask you, but I will ask you things you can answer, and okay. they will ask Very you things good. you can't. That's and then true. That's I will true. shut them down. That? <laughs> so when you first came uh, in contact with the Ezekiel character, I want to know how, what was the inspiration behind your creation and betrayal? Oh gosh! I mean, there there was a lot going on there, but one one of the uh, the inspirations for the voice, uh, because because um, the uh, the comic book, you know, it's the one thing that you don't know from the comic book is mm -hmm. is uh, is what he sounds like, and uh, and he, he the the way that that he was written in the comic book, it kind of reminded me of of my uh, my my great uncle Neb, uh, uh, great uncle Nisbet. He was a big. 350 pound security guard, but he was from Savannah and he had a kind of a slow drawl. And he was, and everything he said, even though he was just saying, I'm gonna make 400 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Mm -hmm. But somehow when he said it, it just gave it a gravitas. It sounded like you know, Shakespeare. Exactly, it sounded, you know what I mean? Yeah, if, if, uh, if, <laughs> if, if Shakespeare from, was from the coast of Georgia, you know, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what it would sound like. And so, and so it, it, it kind of uh, went from there. I think he was my first impression, I think, uh, you know, when I was a kid. And um, and uh, and so when I did Shakespeare, I think it all kind of started to come from from uh, from that Uncle Nebness because uh, because even though he he had this kind of regal and grand quality, it was very uh, natural. You mm -hmm. know, it didn't feel like it was put upon. You know, right. And so uh, so so it started with him, and then uh, and then you know you just follow the script really. You know. Well, I mean, the thing about the character is so interesting is he obviously he was a zookeeper before the apocalypse, but he was also an actor. Yeah. And what you brought to the role is what we see first is the portrayal, I think. Right. And then what evolves as the character is the human, you know, yeah. and, and I just absolutely love that component. And you're right, it was done a lot with the voice. How did, obviously you have a lot of voice acting experience. Sure, sure. How did you bring that all together? Well, to me, it was, uh, it's, it's like, it's like any other profession that, that, that you, you go into. Um, you don't necessarily speak the way you are at home, the way you do when you're at work. And, uh, and for him, uh, the, the King Ezekiel persona was something that, that, uh, it, it kind of came out of work. It was like, it's like uh, if you, people who give speeches, they don't talk that way all the time. But when they get up in front of people, this is the way that they uh, communicate. And, uh, and, and he found that, that, uh, that people stopped, people listened. Also helped that he had a big old tiger with him. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if, if you're gonna talk like a medieval king, best to bring a big animal with you. You know, <laughs> everybody's gonna helps. stop and listen. They're gonna be like, the dude's got a tiger. Let me just shut up and see what he has to say. <laughs> So, so, uh, so that's a good, good way to start. And, um, but, but, uh, but to me, it was, uh, it, it was, it was less about 
play acting necessarily. It was more, it was more that I, I was, he was using this, you know, to, to a certain end. And, um, and once you get used to talking a certain way, like I, I talk loudly. And sometimes I don't need to talk loudly. My wife will tell me, Kari, why don't you just talk a little quieter? You know, but I'm just, I'm used to throwing my voice a little bit. And, uh, you know, and halfway through the day, I'm like, what, am I still talking loud? Yes. And they're like, they're like, just bring it down a little bit. But you don't notice. And I think it's something that he just got used to. And, uh, and people got used to, people got comfortable with. And so, uh, and so he's using it probably more than he needs to. But he just got into the habit of it. It's a switch you have to turn off. I, I, I learned that Lenny James and, and, um, and Andy Lincoln, who uh, they're, they're both British, and, uh, and, and they have uh, southern accents on the, on the show, and uh, so that they don't lose their, you know, accidentally, you know, start speaking this way when they're talking. So they, you know, they, and it doesn't, you know, Morgan doesn't all of a sudden start saying different things, different ways, and you're like, that doesn't sound like him at Wait all. A minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so they're always, so they always keep the accent, and they have to remind themselves to turn it off. Ah. And so that's why, I, in, in my mind, Ezekiel keeps it on because he has to consciously tell himself, I can relax, I can turn this off. Mm -hmm. Well, and he really only turns it off once he sort of becomes broken a little bit yeah you know yeah, yeah. and, well, and when he wants to be vulnerable when he you know when, when, with, with carol yes and uh you know and yeah and and even the thing is is that it takes a lot to get him to to you know let that guard down well yeah i mean even when the first time he went to carol's house when it, which is the first time we saw a little bit behind the mask so to speak right. of the ezekiel character and more of the you know human sure. um uh even then, it was not as dark or much as it was revealed later sure. in the seasons, especially right. after Shiva. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's tough. Is everybody still mourning? Yes. Shiva? It's tough, man. It's been a tough one. I'm in therapy. My, bad, my dad won't talk to me. <laughs> my dad, I was literally like, it's not my fault. It was written in the script, Dad. When you read that episode, what were your thoughts about losing her? that it was gonna suck. I mean, it was, I mean, I knew it was coming, you know, I, I, I knew from the, the, uh, the uh, uh, comic book that that, that was uh, the way that the story was gonna be told, but, um, but uh, I also knew that, that uh, this show just, what it does is it builds you up just enough to stick its hand in your chest, just like, you know, like, uh, like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and just, tear your heart out and just have it bloody and beating as you slowly die. That's what this show does. And then right before you die, it stuffs it back in your chest, sews you back up, and be like, come back next week. It is so, so true. They, you always have hope. Like, the hope is there. Oh, my and, gosh. And then the hope turns into a different hope. Exactly. Once once which, is why, which is why you have to go watch Teen Titans Go in, in, the, in, the, in the mornings and the afternoons. <laughs> You know, then, then you can, you know, you can get, get just enough hope and silliness in your body. Who's going to, is anybody going to see the movie this, this, uh, this July? I'm excited. Teen Titans go to the movies, man. It's going to be good stuff. I, I just want you, uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, you need to bring a diaper because you're going to pee your pants. <laughs> you're going to pee your pants with the hilarity that is going to ensue when you go to see that movie. I've seen it, it is ridiculous. I have peed my pants several times. <laughs> I've had to take several uh, trips to the outlet mall because my jeans are all just so, it, it's, it's, it's awful. I'm a grown man, I don't know why it keeps happening. I'm hoping the third time I see it, I'm gonna be able to keep it together. I've already told you too much, but, but you know what, I feel like we're really close, so, so that's how it's going. What, what, the pee -pee, exactly. Yelling. I should have done the pee pee dance. You could have done the pee pee dance. I know. Knock, knock. Let me in. Knock, knock. <laughs> Let me in. I got to go. But you know what? You bring up a really good point, not with the pee pee, but with the fact that when you're working on such yes. a serious show, and right. also when you're, you know, just, you know, laser focused to deliver a certain product, right. there's a lot of intensity there. So, what do you do in your downtime or real life to relax, to geek out, to, you know, fill yourself up as an artist? Oh, man. I, I mean, uh, I play guitar really badly. Um, 
I, uh, I, I, I like to, uh, I, I like to uh, hike. I love to hike. I lo Meditation's been really great for, for me. I highly recommend it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, um, and, and I, I fly home to see my girls as much as possible, you know, because uh, cause they, they crack me up and, you know, and they're, they're cute little, they're cute little versions of me and my, my wife. It's awesome. Aww. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty cool. What, what, with your voiceover career yeah. in Cyborg, what is sort of, I don't know, how, how, have, how have you developed different iterations of that character? Oh, do, you know what the nice thing is, is that, that uh, Cyborg was my first voiceover audition. And so I wasn't, I was, I was acting, of course, but, but, uh, but it, was, it was pretty much me being exuberant me, you know? The, the, the way that they wrote the, uh, the Teen Titans uh, Cyborg from, uh, from like 2003 was, uh, he was just, he was this guy who, who um, wore his, his, uh, his heart on his sleeve. And um, if, if he was upset, you knew about it. He told you loudly. And if he was happy, he was going to tell you loudly that way as well. And, um, and he, was just, uh, he was just full of bubbly happiness about the fact that he was, uh, he was a, uh, a half robot dude, which was kind of a, a divergence from the comic books, mm -hmm. where he was really upset about the fact that, um, you know, but after a while, you know, you can shoot at people with your sonic cannon, you can fly around, you know, you start to think, eh, hey, this ain't so bad. Yeah, it's not so, so bad. Yeah, so that's how I, how I uh, took um, Cyborg, but all of the different um, versions, I fortunately had really great uh, writers, you know, mm -hmm. even li like uh, like the the Lego uh, version of Cyborg that I play, he's pretty much like the fanboy of uh, of Justice League, you know. He's just like, hey, Batman, can I carry your bags? Can you know, Superman, you know, can can I can I iron your cape? You know, this kind. He's just he's just so excited that he's in the Justice League. And well, he can't there's like it. a certain innocence. Yeah. To you know, the character. And exactly, exactly. Which I uh, which I, I I I really love about it, but. The great thing is, is I've got, I've had so many great uh, writers on different versions that, um, that uh, have uh, kind of led me, you know, uh, in, in a really great direction as far as playing Cyborg in so many different ways. And hopefully they'll, they'll let me keep doing that. Oh, I think they will. I, I absolutely love your portrayal of the character. You guys can line up to ask Kari questions if you like. And while they're lining up, there's in each of the aisles, while they're lining up, tell, tell us about, oh, over here. Way, way over here, way over there. Okay, way on the sides. Um, oh. Tell us about the audition process for Ezekiel. Oh, man. Well, uh, it was actually pretty simple. I, I had one audition, I, um, but, but it was five pages, and it was a, it was a long monologue. Um, it was not, not a monologue, but, but uh, uh, the conversation with Carol in that garden. In, that, in uh, the auditorium. Garden. So it was, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of me talk, 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 and she goes, uh-huh. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. She was like, yeah, yeah. That sounds like some crap. And I was like, no, you know. But but it was it was um it was him being King Ezekiel and then transitioning to to uh you know Zeke the zookeeper. And so uh and so it was it was um it was kind of an exhausting audition because you're you're telling your life story, you know, mm -hmm. which you you know and and it's awesome because you don't get to do that very often. Right. But uh but uh, I had a weekend to to kind of work it up. And, uh, and I went in, and um, I think I did it twice. I walked out of there. I felt really good about it. And, um, and three weeks, they, they, uh, they, they came back three and a half weeks later because they told me that, um, that they liked me, but this was King Ezekiel, and he was a big deal, so we're going to audition every black dude between the ages of 35 and 55 in the entire like, world. Fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> so just sit down and sit tight, and we'll get back to you. And, uh, yeah, like three and a half weeks later, they were like, well, we couldn't find anybody else. You can do it. That's, that, uh, yeah. I love that. That's amazing. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. Hi, we'll start over here. Hi, my name doing? is Michelle. I'm from Chicago. Um, my sister's pretty upset, so the question is, which, one, which version do you like better, Teen Titans or Teen Titans Go? I love them both. I love them both. And, uh, and, and it's, so, it's funny because uh, like old, some old school fans uh, come to me and they literally think that, uh, that like, I'm being blackmailed into doing <laughs> Teen Titans Go. Like, like, uh, like, like they've got like, you know, pictures of me you know, in a hotel room you know, <laughs> oh with like God. a bloody axe or something. And they're like, you're going to do this, otherwise we're going to tell the world. And I'm like, no, I actually love it. It's, it's uh, well, to me, Teen Titans Go 
It's like, um, it's like if you're having a crazy fever dream of the old show for 11 minutes and you wake up and you go, oh my God, what was this? That was amazing. I'm gonna go back to sleep and have another one of those. And so, um, and, and it's, it's all of us, uh, you know, sitting around reminiscing about the old show because they, they said that we were gonna do a new Teen Titans, but it had to be, you know, all comedy. And so, uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of sitting around with your, with your best friends for, uh, that you've had for 15 years and reminiscing about all the things that made you laugh about the old show. The stuff that you guys never heard about because we, we were just joking about it like in between takes. There's a, there's a moment in Teen Titans Go where, uh, where um, Cyborg puts on Green Lantern's outfit and fights Darkseid by, by, by using his, uh, his Green Lantern ring to, uh, to make the Golden Girls. And literally, <laughs> It came from me joking about like like screwing around talking about the Golden Girls and how much I liked that show, like between between shows one day, and we were all just singing the entire song from uh, the entire theme of the Golden Girls, you know, because we all know it. Thank right. you for being a friend. <laughs> Traveling down this road and back again. See, everybody knows that song. True. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant, and that's what we do on Teen Titans Go. <laughs> We, we, uh, we confidently befriend yes. you. So yeah, so, so I, I love them both. I love them both. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew from Michigan. Um, I just wanted to say I absolutely loved you on Critical Role, and I just was wondering if you also, could speak about your uh, character creation process there with doing a blind character and, and just the thoughts behind that. Man, you know what? I had so much fun. I'm so glad that all of those guys are here this weekend. We, we, uh, we had such a good time. I sat down with Matt Mercer. We'd been trying to do this for, for months. And, uh, and, and finally, I had one week off that I could come and do Critical Role. And, um, and all I knew is that, uh, is that I love doing um, uh, this, this uh, kind of Jimi Hendrix, Bootsy Collins voice that, uh, that I did on Teen Titans Go. Uh, who, he was the voice of the couch because they wanted like a relaxing spirit of the couch that would teach you how to relax on a couch such as this. And I was like, I think I just want him to relax, baby. Everybody just needs to take it easy. You know, nobody needs to go crazy. Just have some popcorn and maybe stuff some in the cushions. It's all good. And so, and, and, I, and I love that, that, uh, that voice so much. And I, and I just didn't get to do him anymore. We only did him a few times on Teen Times Go. And, um, and I, I, when I was thinking about the character, I was like, I want him to sound like that. I want him to sound like that. And I thought, I thought he should be blind. I don't know why. I just thought he should, oh, you know what? They, uh, actually, Matt was like, do you want to have a familiar? You know, like, a, like a, a, an animal familiar. And he said, uh, do you, you want to do like a thing where you have uh, a tiger? Like, like in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in that The Walking Dead? Show. Exactly, and I was like, no, nah, I want to go somewhere different. And I wanted to have a really specific reason for having a familiar. And, uh, and I love the idea of being blind, but there would be, a, but a hummingbird would, well, I could see through the eyes of a hummingbird. And so, uh, and so I, ju I just, I, I love the idea of the, of the guy with like, like a pupilless white eyes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he just had a little hummingbird on, it, on his shoulder. And he said, and he would say, you know, baby, I need to see something over here. Why don't you go over there, fly over there, and see what's going on, baby? And so, uh, you know, and, uh, and I thought she should have a regal name. So I named her the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna. <laughs> and, uh, and when you're talking in that voice and you say, Grand Duchess, I want you to fly over there, baby, and then fly back to me. I mean, that just, that's just a fun dude. <laughs> so, you know, and, and by the end of it, it, it was like a three-hour process of, uh, of coming up with the, you know, the... the the, uh, the, the, the quirks and the backstory of the character and everything. And uh, we did that on a Monday afternoon. And uh, Thursday, I came in and we, we did the show. And I cannot wait to come back and do it again. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, Critical Role is, um, is uh, on Geek and Sundry. Who knows Critical Role? I think these guys know it. There's oh, a yeah. Critical Role panel this weekend. They're exactly. all here, so yeah. But, um, but we, we played Dungeons and Dragons online, and it is at, with, uh, with Matt Mercer and, and Laura Bailey and, and uh, uh, Marisha Ray and uh, Travis Willingham and Sam Riegel and, uh, and, and Liam O'Brien. All of these are amazing uh, guys, uh, uh, Talis and Jaffe and, um, and uh, uh, Ashley Johnson, and they, they invited me to come on, and it is the most fun uh, thing to watch. It is so addictive, and uh, I can't wait to get back. 
Yeah. Thank you. And enjoy the panel. Absolutely. Hi. I'll try and make it if I can. Hello, Mark from Cleveland. Uh, do you have any of your t-shirts with you this weekend? The never bring a bat to a cat fight. Yeah, no, you know what? Do I, have them? I don't have them here because we we uh, we sell them online because uh, the proceeds go to charity. Right. And so to keep the money separate, I, I, I just uh, we just sell them online. Where can but, we get them? Uh, it's at uh, represent.com uh, uh, slash uh, Kari. My name, K-H-A-R-Y. But yes, yes, and we're still selling those shirts. Uh, the, uh, the proceeds go to uh, Hurricane Relief. Uh, Florida and Texas and Puerto Rico especially still need our help. So definitely uh, uh, buy a shirt, represent for the kingdom, and, uh, and That's help the a good cause. Did you come up with that line, by the way? I did, I, I did. I it's love like that. The, it's every once in a while I come up with a, pre a pretty good line, and, and I was like, I'm put putting on that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my question is, okay, I'm a big fan, but my question is, do you think that Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo was a good movie? I thought I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was a hilarious movie, and and it was uh, and and I loved uh, 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 the the Tokyo movie because because it was um, it was a love letter to all of the, uh, the the cartoonists and the animators and the writers of that show because uh, because at, at the, you know spoiler alert the um, the uh, uh, movie's uh, bad guy was kind of this this uh, this this ink. Um, uh, uh, cartoon character come to life, and uh, and so it was kind of a throwback to to this um, to to the uh, uh, Japanimation anime anime that we uh, that, that we sourced a lot from. We we did a, a it was kind of a morph of American and uh, and um, and and anime, and so uh, and so it was kind of a love letter for that. And I really love the animation in that movie. Did you think it was good? Did you did you uh, enjoy it? Yeah, I loved it. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> Plus, I get to eat a lot of sushi in that thing. You know, anytime I can eat sushi, even if it's just fake cartoon sushi, I love it. That's how I roll. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Uncle Three. You know where I'm going with this, Victor? <laughs> say, oh, say it again. I'm Michael, Uncle of Three. Uncle three. Uncle of three. Uncle of oh, three. Dude. Why did the, why did the vampire Absolute, kite what? the cheerleader? There's why couldn't the viper, the vampire bite the cheerleader? Why? He had a toothache. Boom! <laughs> All right. Good one. That is Thank a good you. one, man. Yeah. Nice, nice. You know, there's nothing like being an uncle of three because you can drop him off at the end of the day. <laughs> that is true. Hi. Um, my name is Arn Castro and I'm from Force Park. Uh -huh. Um, I have a question to ask. If you had a chance to voice any other um, uh, superhero from DC, who would you choose? Batman. <laughs> I mean, you always want to voice Batman. I mean, come on. We all would. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody would. Everybody just wants to walk around talking like this. <laughs> you know, I just sit in, my, sit in my cowl at home talking like this. I'm Batman. Then my wife is like, no, you're not. Go take the trash out. Well, she's like, actually, she's like, at least he's not projecting as much. Right, exactly. At least, yeah, yeah. I will be able to relax my voice a little bit <laughs> if I could just talk like that man all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a big fan of yours. So. Um, Thank you. My question is, what's your favorite episode from Teen Titans or The Walking Dead? Oh, good Lord. There's so many. From the old show, um... One of my favorite episodes was when uh, Control Freak uh, sucked us into the TV and we had to jump through all the different uh, TV shows to try and find our way back. And the awesome thing about that is, is, that, uh, is that they actually drew my dad into the show. My dad is uh, Dr. Victor Payton, and, he was, uh, and, and they were doing um, one of those like, interview shows, like the actor Studio, and, uh, and they were asking uh, Dr. Payton what the secret to world peace was, and he was just about to answer when we come running through the, the, the screen. <laughs> So that was my dad, and that's kind of awesome. Um, uh, Teen Titans Go, uh, my favorite episode. Oh, man, there's so many good ones. Um, I, uh, I love, uh, uh, like, uh, like, all the colors of Raven. Um, I love that episode. I love, uh, I love the one where, um, where, where they teach you uh, not to get involved in pyramid schemes. I think that's very important. <laughs> Life lesson. There, yes. I also, I love when I get to rant. You know, because there, there was one that we that we that we uh, did one that was um, about um, Beast Boy finding his spirit animal, but it was really just about how we think that the uh, the university system is broken, 
and, uh, and, and Cyborg just goes off on the fact that, you know, tuitions are too high and why is all of that happening? So, so uh, I love it because we'll fart a few times to keep the kids laughing and then we'll like say like re really uh, weird commentary on top of it. It's awesome. Um, on The Walking Dead, um, my, honestly, my favorite episode is the one where Sheba died. You know, it, and it, it's not because it, it, because it was so emotional for me. You know, it was like, it was, it was um, every once in a while they give me the opportunity to, uh, to, to take an episode and they're just like, all right, Kari, you got to keep this show going. This, this is on you today. And, um, and it was like, and, and it was me and, and, uh, and Cooper Andrews who plays uh, uh, Jerry and Melissa McBride. And uh, yeah, and, and, we, um, and, and, and we just, they literally drug us through the mud. And, um, and uh, it was so emotional. It was, um, it was so gut-wrenching, but, um, but, but we, were, we were all in this mud and muck together and, uh, and, and dragging ourselves out of it. And as hard as it was to watch and as hard as it was to do, it's probably one of the most um, uh, like, um, like, uh, uh, important moments for Ezekiel. And, uh, and so I, I, really, I really enjoyed being able to bring that, bring that out. It hurt, but it was kind of amazing. Also, I got to kill like a a bunch of walkers, a and, lot. Uh, and yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, I hadn't really got to do that. So, uh, so yeah, I, I cut one's head off. I stabbed another one in the eye. You know, it was just yeah, you know, when you when I'm screaming at Jerry, I'm stabbing people in the eye. What could be better? I mean, it's kind of like the moment where we see Ezekiel completely. You know, from the first introduction we've had to the character, yeah. to, you know, it's a full arc, and then everything after, you know, it's a life-changing moment, obviously. Yeah. But I'm curious, one of my, you're kind of known for your speeches, your introduction to the character, and then um, the And Still I Smile speech. Yeah, yeah, that, Tell, that was, that literally, I, I, I bawled like a baby when I came back to see the, the, the remnants of the kingdom, uh, because we did that first speech before, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the day, mm -hmm. you know, where, the, and yet I smile. And, uh, and we were all so pumped up and they're all gathering around me and I'm like, we are one, ah! And then they douse me with blood and they're like, now walk back, you know, at the end of the day after I'm just, you know, bloodied and battered and I looked in some of those people's faces and I did like the ugly cry. You think you cried when Shiva died? I cried like just, it was just like snot, and just you know, just there, there was there was there was there was tears coming out of my ears. I was crying so hard, and uh, I was just, it was it was so bad. I'm glad you didn't see it. It was way too much. It was like it was like the, li literally the director was like, "Why don't we say he cried like that on the way back to the kingdom? <laughs> Nobody needs to see that much snot coming out of your car." So, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But that was a wonderful scene. Hi. Hello, my name is Logan. I'm from Antioch. Uh, I just want. To like, I've been a fan of your work since I was very young when you were on the original Teen Titans and now seeing you on The Walking Dead and even on Critical Role. Uh, I just have to ask if you'd had any kind of advice for people trying to get into your line of work, uh, looking to kind of break into acting or voice acting. Yeah, I, I got advice. Um, I would say uh, that, that, um, that Everything that I've I've done has has uh, whatever you've seen has taken me ha, go back 10, 12, 13 years before that and uh, and and start there because uh, because my love for doing what I what what I do started when when nobody knew who I was and nobody was watching but uh, but you you have to you have to stick with it they say you, it takes what, uh, what 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. And I've literally been doing this. I mean, I, 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 started, I started doing stand-up um, uh, stand comedy when I was 14, 15 years old. Uh, I, I uh, you know, and I begged my parents uh, and they, um, and for some reason they put me on a plane and, uh, and I, I, w I went to New York and I did, I did stand-up uh, on the Upper West Side when I was 15 years old, I, I uh, you know, and, uh, and, and if you've ever, if you ever bombed on stage as, as a, as a stand-up comedian, yeah, then, then you know the true feeling of loneliness, you know, but the thing is, is that what you have to do is, uh, is that, is that, that happens to everybody, but you got to get back up there and, and, uh, and endeavor to make those people laugh. You got to get back up there. Every time somebody tells you no, you got to get back up there. You, you have to learn if this truly is your passion. Because the truth is, is that this is, the, because the fun thing that we do, it's very, very hard to get there. 
And it's uh, and the and the truth is is that all of the crap that you have to that you have to kind of wade through, all of the the, the rejection, all of the negativity that people tell you you're you're not good enough, you're you're um you're you're not pretty enough, you're not big enough. I was uh, I don't know how many times they they were, they were like you know what we really want this guy to be a big black dude you know and you're just a skinny black dude so you know there's really no part for you, and uh, and it's like it's it's like I don't care. I love this. I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what other people tell you. And what I, what I would, would say, no matter what you do, this profession or any other, this is, uh, this is not, you know, um, uh, advice for, you know, uh, just, just acting. But whatever you pursue, whatever you do, if people start telling you, I don't know if you should be doing this, I don't know if you should be doing this, sometimes that means you're on the right track. You're the only one who needs to believe in you. Right? And then you bring and you pull them along. You pull them along. Thank this, you. There was 12 years before, uh, when, as a professional actor, before I got my first voiceover audition. But I was ready when that audition came along because that audition was cyborg and I've been doing it for another 15 years, mm -hmm. you know? But it took that 15 years of perseverance, you know? Don't, the, uh, it, looks so, it, it looks so easy and it feels great. You know, uh, you know, but but um, but just know that ju this, just like any job, is is uh, is gonna put you through the ringer. So be ready, steal yourself, my friend, and go do it. <laughs> Thank you. And, and good luck to you. Hi. Hi. My name is Amani Tova. I'm from Plainfield, and I have one question. If we could change one thing in the Walking Dead, where would it be, and why? I want my tiger back. <laughs> I mean, I just said it was my favorite episode, but damn it, I want my tiger back. I, you know, it's, it's like, uh, <laughs> that thing was awesome. You know, and, and, uh, and she's, the thing about, the thing about Shiva is, uh, is that she was this beautiful and brilliant and one-of-a-kind thing in a, in a land full of darkness. And, and really, that's what each and every character is in The Walking Dead. You are a shining light. You are a life in a, in, in a, in a land of uh, darkness, and I think that's what kind of brings us all, you know, back to the show, is that, uh, is that at one time in our lives or another, we struggle, you know, and uh, we feel like there's no, but we're, we're just surrounded by, you know, uh, stuff that we've got to fight against. And it's nice to see other people who are not giving up on life, and, uh, and especially Ezekiel. And I, I, felt like, uh, I felt like Shiva is, it really is kind of a, a symbol for what, for, uh, for what that is. But at least I've got my Jerry. At least I got my Jerry, yeah. right? Thank you. Thank you. You know, although the show um, has definitely diverged from the comics, there are still a lot of through lines between the two properties. Are you, or have you been reading the comics? Did you read oh, them? Oh yeah, I, I, I uh, read the comics. I, um, I stopped at a certain moment <laughs> that will not be named. I'm gonna try to work, I'm gonna try and, uh, I'm gonna try and skip that chapter of the uh, of the of yeah. the uh, uh, the comic book. I'm gonna skip right over that and see if I uh, see if I can get somebody else's head cut off. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. D different people can lose different bodies. Different bodies. people, yeah. you know. Other people die different ways, you know, in the comic books. Hundred percent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Kari. How you doing? My I'm name good, man. Thanks for asking. <laughs> My name's Dennis, and I'm here, and I'm from Chicago. So I don't know if you probably watch any of the um, DCEU movies, but are you excited for the um, Cyborg movie? I hope that it's still coming out. I, I, I would love uh, to, uh, to, to see it. I feel, like, I, I feel like a proud papa, you know, because it's like, because nobody knew who Cyborg was before we, I mean, that's not, not true. People knew who he was. I knew he was growing up, but he was like, he was like a second, third kind of tier uh, 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 character in the DC universe and then um and then we came along with Teen Titans in 2003 and there are kids who grow up now and they're just like cyborg is like huge you know they just they 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 haven't known anything else and so uh and and I feel like you know it was it, it was you know without our teen tight that first first Teen Titans you know uh cyborg wouldn't be in the Justice League right now and um, and uh, I think he's perfect for the Justice League. You need your you need your communication specialist. You need your computer whiz, and it also helps that he can uh, fly and beat the crap out of things. So uh, so I'm looking forward. I, I hope that uh, that they uh, still have a cyborg. I, I'm not sure if 
if, uh, if it's still slated, but, uh, but I will be the first in line. Supposedly in 2020. Maybe. Okay. Dude. Are, are you looking forward to it? Oh, yeah. 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 Man, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Z. My qu oh, and I'm from Chicago, sorry. Um, my question is, with all the cosplay around, was it like seeing your characters in cosplay by all your fans? You know, the thing about my characters is you gotta really uh, commit to, to play, play one of my characters. I, Cyborg, you gotta put on, all, you know, it, like, like, uh, like if you wanna be Beast Boy, you, you know, you slap on some green paint on your face, you know, maybe put some ears on, throw on some spandex. You gotta like stay up all night you know, building like like uh, like cyborgs, chest armor and and the and the plate and everything. And then and then I went off and was like, uh, well, I'll find something easier for you to do. And then I go and do King Ezekiel, you know. And you've got to wear like a you know. And trust me, I know I know how that wig feels. I know how all of that uh, all of that stuff feels. So uh, so it's uh, you. I I love when people are cosplaying uh, cyborg and Ezekiel because uh, because I know the commitment that's taken, especially because most of the time it's in the summertime and those people are melting away. <laughs> they, they, they start off, they start off a certain size, you know, at the beginning on Friday of the, of the convention and by, by Sunday they're just like a puddle with like, with, like a, with like a wig on top of it. That is, I mean, you guys film in Atlanta, your wardrobe is layers on layers on layers and then your wig. Honestly, I, I mean, I love Robert Kirkman, but I also cuss him out every time I see him. Because I was like, you know what? Ezekiel, you knew that somebody was going to be in Inside. that wig, in the heat, with this, this big leather jacket on. You know, it was, like, it was like, you knew. You couldn't give me like a nice linen coat. <laughs> you know, something that blows in the breeze. Fine. Thank you for the best job I ever had. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If the only thing you think that we're scared of is the wig on King Ezekiel, you got it all wrong, baby. I'm ready for that wig. <laughs> oh, babe. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. You know what? Come bring it. Bring it. I love it. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Nice to meet you. What's your name, bud? Julian from New York. Nice. I wanted to know around what issue love one, is? <laughs> around issue no, around 140, no, 144 when Alpha killed 12 people at Alexandria and put their heads on pikes to make a border. Dude, you're getting really specific about something I don't want to talk about. <laughs> All right, come on, keep it coming. If this were to happen on the show, how right? many characters do you think this will happen to? Um, I think that, uh, that Alpha will slip on a banana peel and get eaten by a, a zombie, and this will never happen. That's what I think. I think I, I think you're right. I think that yes, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I just I just read the script and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna happen like that. Her bald head is just gonna slip right into just some muckety muck, and um, and we'll never know how that happens. <laughs> oh well, I'm sure. <laughs> and then we all have a barbecue, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> also, um, last season there was a scene where there was a CGI deer in a carnival. What was your reaction to that when you saw it? The CGI deer? Yeah. I thought it was incredibly lifelike. Move on. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, yes, you're welcome. Dude, what are you doing over there? You're killing me, man. You're trying to get me in trouble. You're dredging up all sorts of stuff. You're dredging all kinds of stuff. <laughs> hi. Uh, hi, I'm Owen from Chicago, and I was wondering if there were any, like, storylines from the Walking Dead comics that you could bring onto the show, like, what, w what would one be? Uh, let's see. Um, well... I mean, I know the ones that I don't want them to bring on. You know, they, they, usually, they usually bring the big ones on. So, so I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm actually hoping that I, I've always wondered why they haven't gone to Washington, D.C., you know? And, and, uh, and, and I would love for them to, to, to get to that uh, because uh, cause we've been sitting in Alexandria, and it's, like, right over there. I just want to go see the Lincoln, you know, monument. You know what I mean? It's like, seems, seems like seems like we should just take a field trip. You know, so maybe we'll do that. I don't know. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. Real trip. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. I'm Adolfo. I'm from Chicago. Um, so you've played a few, I guess, iconic roles. I feel like you really made that cyborg character. That whole booyah was never in the comics. I feel like it was all Yeah, you. We, we stuck a booyah or two in there over exactly. the years. Exactly. That thing is associated with them all the time now. Um, and then a lot of people didn't talk about your voice work for uh, Keldor and Young Justice. Oh, Yeah. Which, Young Justice is coming back season three. Which was, 
We've already recorded all 26 episodes. We're just waiting for the, the, uh, the animation to come back. It, I've already seen some of it. It looks great. I'm so excited. What was your question? That was going to be my question right there. It's coming, man. It is coming. I am so excited. It is, is, it is as twisty and turny and, and full of like surprises and, and, uh, and so many characters. I can't, I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You got a time frame for us? Yeah, it'll, before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. Oh, it's that's definitely, good. yeah, and it'll be on the, uh, um, the DC streaming uh, uh, website. But, um, but 26 episodes coming to you, man. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, thank you. What is, what is the process for learning the fight sequences on The Walking Dead? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot of rehearsal, um, depending on how intricate it is. But sometimes it's like, uh, like Cooper was like, there's a, there's a walker behind me. It looks like it, it might bite me if somebody doesn't kill it. And I was like, I'll kill it. That, that's, that's how it is sometimes. It's like, it's like we're situating things here and there, and they're like, um, who's got a free gun or a free sword? Stick that one in the eye. You know, it's, uh, now, when we're fighting each other, the, uh, when we're not fighting the walkers, it's a little more choreographed. When we're fighting each other, it's, uh, you know, then, then the, uh, the swings and the punches, you know, sometimes we, we take a week and, uh, and have a, a fight trainer come in and, and, and literally choreograph. The, uh, the stuff that comes through. But, um, but when we're killing walkers, we're kind of we're winging it. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of what makes it believable, you know? But yeah. now that the show's not, it's kind of inversed, not really about the dead, but about the groups about the living. that yeah. are alive, then um, the choreography has gotten more intense. It has, As it you has. guys have also become better fighters in the storyline. Right, it's true, it's true. It's, uh, and, um, and it's always fun to be able to, to, to use that, that, um, that kind of, you know, uh, stage combat background, you know, that, uh, that Ezekiel has, and, and fortunately I have too. And so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's one thing I love about, you know, that, that, that he can pull the sword out and, and, uh, and really, you know, be a little swashbuckler. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi. Hey, what's up? I'm Jerem from West Lafayette, Indiana. Awesome. And uh, I just wanted to know if you could bring Shiva back by killing or sacrificing a current living uh, character, who would it this be? This is not a nice question. <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, I don't know. Judith was getting on my nerves the other day. Why don't we just, <laughs> you know, she was just like, you know, there was one cookie left, you know, and I was like, that's my cookie. I come back there, that girl's got crumbs all over her face. I was like, how dare you? How dare you, young lady? Don't you look at me with those doleful eyes. You're going down. I'm gonna do a seance and bring back my, my Shiva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell that to her face, I don't even care. <laughs> which, which character would <laughs> the you? The darkest answer ever. <laughs> what about you, which character would you trade for Shiva? Uh, well, seeing as I like the good guys, I'd probably off Simon. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 that, that, that's a good one. He's, um, he's not a nice guy. He's not a nice guy. You know what, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't kill him, I'd just shave the mustache, because that wouldn't just drive him nuts. You know, he'd just feel naked. Play, play the long game, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Adrian from Geneva. Um, wh what advice would you have for someone trying to get into the pop culture industry, like content creation? Content, like writing, you Yeah, think? like writing or drawing. Writing or drawing? Uh, write and draw. Every day. No, I'm serious. Write and draw every day. Some some of the uh, the, the um, uh, greatest artists that uh, that that are are, are working today. Um, uh, one of uh, a friend of mine. He he worked a job from from like from like 11 to 6 in the morning. That uh, and and uh, where where he was at, at one of those uh, like like truck way stations, and uh, and and he would sit there and he would draw all night long. He would draw all night long until he couldn't draw anymore, and uh, and and um, and it takes that repeti repetition because uh, because eventually you're going to get noticed for your talent, and it's not it's it's not it's not going to be that um, that uh, you know because you've got an incredible incredible web presence. There are a lot of people with an incredible web presence that 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 draw a lot, but uh, but it's 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 about their commitment to their craft. You know what I mean? And uh, and if you are committed to your craft, people will find you. That's the, if you start there, start with your craft, and, you know, and, and let your passion guide you. 
Because your passion will go a long way, man. If you're, if you're, if you're sitting there and, uh, and nothing's happening in your world, but your soul is getting fed by what you're doing, it, people will feed off of it. People will feed off of it. And before you know, they start asking you to do things. I was, um, th there was a while that, that, uh, that I would do anything to, to, uh, to get on stage and act. You didn't have to pay me. And then people just started asking me, you know, would you please come? We will pay you for it. Because they, they could see the passion and, and, and people are drawn to it. So you draw your passion. Write your passion. Yes, sir. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, thank you. And good luck. And I think you were also saying, like, what we see now as the, you know, the artist, Kari, th this is the product of decades of work. And so be in it for the long game, would yeah, you say? Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like I just got discovered, you know, as King Ezekiel by, by a lot of people. It's like, I got grandma. I've been doing this a while, man. You know, yeah. it takes, it, it's, uh, it, it's taking some commitment. And I didn't, and, I, and people ask me, so you just got that audition. I've been auditioning for that casting director for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And she always brought me back because I always came prepared. I must, I must have, uh, for, for Sharon Bialy and Sherry Thomas, I must have auditioned, I don't know, yeah, like 30 times over, over the course of, uh, of 15 years. And uh, they have a little sign on their, on their signing sheet that um, when you come in and it, and it says, I'm not good enough to come unprepared. You know, are you? And I love that sign because I always come prepared and I always know I'm gonna kill it. Even if I don't get the job, I know that they're gonna remember me you know, because I love what I do and I, I refuse to, to uh, walk into a room and misrepresent my talent. You know, that's the worst thing you can do. So Absolutely. whenever you walk into a place, always prepare yourself so that you give the best thing you got. You know, all you got is you, give the best. Absolutely, hi. Isabel from Chicago. How you doing, Isabel from Chicago? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, you from right around here, right around the corner? Huh? You from right around here, right around the corner? Um, yeah, downtown. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Uh, um, uh, uh, North uh, Cubbies? Near the Cubbies? Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Very good, very good. White Sox don't get upset. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah. I, was no, I got another question. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> wondering what was the most memorable fight scene you ever um, did for The Walking Dead? Uh, the, the most Good memorable question. fight scene I did, for, you know what? Well, there were two. One was, was in the ravine um, uh, right before Shiva jumps in because that, that, that's the most uh, walkers that I got to kill like in, 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 uh, in one fell swoop. You know, when, um, when, when Jerry's trying to pull me out of there and, uh, and I just start stabbing and slashing. That was kind of fun. But the, uh, the one that I really loved is one that you guys never saw. We, in the, in the first episode, we did a whole sequence where, where um, Cooper and, um, and, uh, and, and Lenny and, um, and, and I and, uh, and um, Carl McInerney, who plays Richard, uh, Carlos Navarro, uh, uh, and um, uh, Carrie uh, Cahill, who, who plays uh, um, uh, our archer, um, uh, Diane. Uh, the, we were, it was our first day, and, um, and uh, uh, we were, we were kind of, you know, moving right along, do, doing, the, uh, doing this um, episode, and we had moved our, our set. We weren't shooting in the place that we thought we were. We had to move sets at the last minute. So, um, so we were shooting in this abandoned uh, gas station, and, um, and, and it hadn't really been decided how many, killer, uh, how many uh, walkers we were gonna kill. And, um, and Greg Nicotero just looked at me and he was like, you wanna kill some walkers? And I was like, yeah. And we spent like the next five hours just like slash. We, we picked up a, a ladder and like slammed it into like eight of them and uh, 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 Cooper and I and, uh, and, and killed all of those dudes and I cut one's head off and stabbed one and I, it was awesome. But you guys never saw it because it got cut from the show. <laughs> how, how often does that happen where you guys it, will film a scene and, and it just will never make the final cut? Well, yeah, yeah. No, there was, uh, it's funny because in this last um, episode, uh, people were wondering why Ezekiel didn't go looking for Henry. I actually did. We shot that. But we were over time. That, that, that episode was already like 10 minutes over time. And the scene of me going and coming uh, just got cut. 
And, uh, and so it actually happened. You just didn't see it. You just didn't see it. I guess they only go for playing the extended episodes when it's like the season opener or right, right. The season ender. And they, they, they actually, we went over a few minutes, but that just goes to show how much story we, we had to tell and something had to, you know, get, get end up on the uh, cutting room floor. Yep. It's kind of crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so what do you do uh, to relax in your downtime? What do you watch? Let's go there. You oh, what do I watch? I watch The Office. I watch The Office. <laughs> I, it's, like, it's like my comfort food. You know, uh -huh. it's, a, it's like I just sit there. And uh, I was literally, just this morning, I was like, I was, uh, I was so tired because I kept waking up and going to sleep. I've been going to a lot of conventions over the, the last uh, couple of months. And I was in Australia. And then we went to Germany. And my body's not sure exactly what time it is anymore. So I just keep waking up at like 2 or 4 in the morning. And, um, and I was like, uh, you know what I need? I need me some D'Angelo Vickers. So I, so I put on like the one where uh, Will Ferrell was, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the boss for like a couple of episodes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and watched him slam dunk and, and bust his head wide open. And uh, you know what, I literally was watching that this morning. I, li I, love, uh, I love that and Parks and Rec, I, wa I watch, absolutely. I was just uh, uh, laughing at um, at uh, 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 what's what's his name? He was uh, when he oh treat yourself. I just watched treat yourself. I wanted to treat myself to a Batman costume, sit there and cry about. I have to treat myself sometimes. <laughs> you treat myself, I'm gonna buy this costume. You do deserve to treat yourself. Everybody's got to treat themselves. Absolutely. We treating ourselves right now. That's right. Was that me or you? I don't know. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I, 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 had, um, I had onions this morning. Hi. Hi, I'm Kristen from Chicago, and I was wondering what your favorite piece of Shakespeare or theater work is. My, my favorite Shakespeare is Henry V. Uh, and, uh, and, and I love it so much um, because, uh, because to me, it's, it's not just a, uh, a story about, about, obviously, you know, Henry V and, and, um, and uh, you know, how he was able to take on, you know, the, this, uh, this army that was ten, you know, you know five times this size and, uh, and, uh, and beat back the, uh, the French, uh, you know, armada. But, but it was, it's also an, an analogy about, about theater and about, uh, about entertainment. Because, um, because the thing is, is that, is that uh, in Shakespeare's day, they, won't, they only had like, you know, at most like, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 uh, actors that were telling this story. And so, um, and, and in, in, the, uh, in the prologue, in the, in the chorus, the prologue to Henry V, he, uh, he, he turns to the audience because, because I'm, I, I guarantee you that there were people that were like, he's not going to be able to pull off telling this story. It's a story about how 5,000 went up against 20-something thousand and how they won. How do you tell that with 15 people? And Shakespeare literally says, I can't do this without your imagination. When you see one person, see 5,000. When you see these, when we talk of horses, you see them printing their proud hooves in the received earth. You know, it is your thoughts that must deck our kings, that must carry us over hills, over times. That's what, the, that's what, what, uh, what, what, the play is about it's about it's about overcoming you know this artifice and going on a journey together you know and that's all i want that's all i want you know when it, when it comes to being an actor and telling a story so yeah i get a little worked up about that one yeah you have to play that role now yeah. right guys <laughs> thank you thank you Kari, you're always such an awesome guest. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Guys, thank you so much for coming to yeah. see me. Are you here tomorrow and Sunday? I will be here tomorrow as well, absolutely. Okay. All right, thank you so much. And guys, give one more big round of applause. Thank to you so Kari much. Payton.